Welcome to the Cutting Edge Convention, a worldwide movement to revolutionize your life. No more stumbling around in the dark, wasting precious weeks, months, and years trying to figure it out on your own. Get ready for valuable innovations and strategies. And now, here's your host, Marcy Peters, the Age Backward Mentor. Hello, and welcome back to the Cutting Edge Convention, innovations to revolutionize your life. I'm your host, Marcy Peters, the Age Backward Mentor. I help smart, successful men and women just like you step into a life they love and a body they love being in. Today we're talking essential oils. This is such a hot topic and I'm so excited to help you learn more about it and to learn more about it myself. So today I have expert Melody Watts. Let me tell you about Melody. Melody Watts is a health mentor, alternative wellness expert, motivational speaker, and mother. Melody helps those who want a holistic life through lifestyle, nutrition, and essential oils. Through her own struggles with an autoimmune disease, she is passionate, passionate about knowing how the body works and what can heal the body naturally. Melody, welcome to the Cutting Edge Convention. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm thrilled to have you here. Melody, what got you into essential oils in the first place? Well, I had been using alternative options and therapies for several years before I tried essential oils. And it actually was my son who got me into essential oils. I had a three-year-old um, at the time. He was dealing with a cough that would not go away at night. He would cough and he would cough through the night. Mm -hmm. And I was trying everything and I felt really, really helpless. And this was about, oh, five years ago before it was really mainstream to understand a lot of inflammatory conditions, before a lot of people uh, didn't necessarily understand candida and food intolerance, it wasn't quite as mainstream as, as it is now. Mm -hmm. And so even as, as an alternative medicine person, you know, I had 17 years alternative medicine experience working in holistic clinics. This was still very new to me. And so I didn't know what to do. And I felt really, really helpless just to manage the symptoms. I felt helpless. And again, I was trying everything mainstream. I was trying everything over the counter. And I was just having a really hard time getting any relief. And I was getting to the point where we were going to have to put him on some sort of anti-inflammatory, some sort of steroid or allergy medication. And unfortunately, I know that that comes with a slew of side effects. And what I really wanted to know was what is causing this? What is causing this inflammation in his body? I could not figure it out. And no doctors were giving me any answers. I was even going to alternative doctors who couldn't give me answers. And so someone had me sample out essential oil for respiratory health. And they said, put this on his feet before he goes to bed and put it on his chest. And I was willing to do anything. So I put it on his feet and his chest and he slept through the night without coughing. And I was really, really amazed. I wanted to learn everything about these oils. I wanted to know why, why essential oils hadn't worked before for me and why these were different. I wanted to know, you know, quality of essential oils. I wanted to know chemistry. I wanted to know how they work with our cells. And so I, delved in and I learned everything that I could about essential oils. And at that point, I also realized that as long as I was using this essential oil, he wasn't coughing. But if I wasn't using it, he still was coughing. And so I was having to use this essential oil about once a week um, to, to keep his cough at bay. And then I discovered, of course, inflammatory conditions. And so I started changing his diet and we started doing candida cleansing and I started using some essential oils also for candida cleansing and, and getting inflammation down in the body as well as rather just treating the symptom. So I started using that and then his cough finally went away and that was really amazing. And so from that, I, used, I started using it for my own experience with a, you know, a headache and I would get these headaches uh, due to my autoimmune condition and I was tired of have, always having to take something synthetic or something that was going to maybe be toxic to my liver or my stomach. And this was something that really got the symptoms down for me manageable so that I could function at least while I was working through some of my autoimmune condition. And then I found that there were also essential oils that helped systemically, not just for symptoms, but also systemically. Um, and so that's how I got into it. Mm, what a great story. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah. So Let's talk about essential oils. First of all, what are essential oils? Essential oils are aromatic compounds that come from the plants, 
um, roots, stems, flowers, and barks of trees and plants. And what they do is they protect, protect the cells in the plant from disease, from um, threats that might come by. They also attract pollinators. There's a lot of things essential oils do. They help regenerate cells. They help keep the plant really healthy. They're essential to the plant's life. So that's what they are. Okay. Great. And then, um, so what are, what are they used for? So if someone's new to essential oils and they have no idea, like, where do you start with them usually? So generally what essential oils are used for, because they are these aromatic compounds, um, I actually learned in the beginning that 60 to 70% of the chemical constituents found in plants um, are used in some form synthetically um, for a lot of different things, lotions, potions, even prescriptions or over-the-counters they're used. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to learn the similarities um, between the chemical compounds in the plants and the chemical compounds in modern day society that are being used, I started to realize that I could use them for basically anything that I was using all these other products for, only I would get a much better, more effective result, often for cheaper. And so that was really big for me. Wow, I can get these. They're less expensive. They're more effective. So I'll give you an example. Peppermint essential oil, the main chemical constituent is menthol. Mm -hmm. And menthol is in many, you know, rubs and creams and, and things that you can see on the market these days, um, even cough drops, right? But it's the synthetic form of menthol that is added and extracted from peppermint essential oil. And what happens is a scientist will actually take a mirror image copy of that menthol molecule and they'll clone it and they'll go and they'll package it and sell it. And the interesting thing about it is that this synthetic molecule over here actually works. It has therapeutic benefit, right? It goes into the body and works just the way that the real menthol works, except that there's one little difference and that is the chirality of the molecule or the way that it sits in nature. So there's nothing you can do to make your left hand function like your right hand. So what happens is, is the body really recognizes this organic molecule, this organic menthol that comes straight from the earth. And this menthol, it recognizes it a little bit. The sympathetic nervous system recognizes it, suppresses the symptom, can even get inflammation down, right? But the parasympathetic nervous system, it actually suppresses that as well. And that's where essential oils become really powerful is they not only suppress the symptom, but because they're intelligent molecules, our body recognizes them and it actually goes in and increases parasympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. while suppressing the symptom. So they're really, really powerful that way. I'll give you another example of this. Frankincense essential oil can come in contact with mutated cells and create apoptosis in mutated cells. So it'll make a sick cell self-destruct. Well, it also can recognize a healthy cell and generate copies of healthy cells. And that is something that, you know, we just don't see in modern day um, synthetics. They don't have intelligence and they don't have the ability to regenerate. They don't have the ability to really work with the cell like an organic living intelligent molecule. And that's the biggest difference in why people get such great results. So what can you use them for? You can use them any, from anything from a sore throat to itchy, watery eyes to adrenal support to um, cleaning out the liver. They also help with production of glutathione, so it helps with headaches. It helps with um, sleep. It can tone the nervous system, so we use essential oils like lavender and vetiver and patchouli and um, wild orange, a lot of essential oils you can use to help sleep. Roman chamomile is an excellent, excellent one. It works as a sedative. And so um, they're great. I like to apply them along the spine for sleep. And I also think the heart and the belly are another great place to apply essential oils. So sleep, we also use them for mental focus. So there's blends that really help stimulate the nervous system and relax the mind and increase mental focus. So people that have mental focus issues, this is really going to support the function of the brain. They can oxygenate the brain. So when you look at peppermint and frankincense, there are certain chemical constituents that really go in and oxygenate the cells. So that's how we're increasing mental focus. That's actually another two oils you can use for headaches is peppermint and frankincense because they do oxygenate, increase circulation. Um, frankincense in particular has sesquiterpenes. 
And that's just a, a really fancy name for a chemical constituent that can cross the blood brain barrier. And we don't know, there's not a synthetic known to man that can cross the blood brain barrier and actually directly affect the brain that way. And so it's excellent for mood management. It's excellent for inflammation and um, mental focus. One of the other ways that I love to use essential oils is for emotional support. So in the beginning, in the first year, I was using essential oils. I was using it for coughs. I was using it for bladder support. I was using it for kidney support, for lung support, um, you know, for coughs, for immune system support, because we found that they're very powerful um, at protecting against environmental threats. They protect the cell against the replication of certain pathogens and things like that. So, um, and, and again, it's very specific. So there's, there's no um, governing body that says that that's what essential oils do, but there's a lot of studies that show what essential oils do in regards to environmental threats and things that can threaten our cells. It goes in and it can protect the cells and stop replication of certain threats, which is really powerful for people that um, have immune systems that are compromised. Mm -hmm. So on top of using them for all those amazing things, emotional support was something that I was really pleasantly surprised about. At the time, um, I was going through a really tr traumatic divorce, and my mom had just died in a car accident, a tragic mm -hmm. car accident. And so I was dealing with a lot of stress, being a single mom, um, and dealing with you know the, this death and dealing with um, the financial stress of being a single mom and things like that. And there was one day where I just could not get out of bed. I was like, I just can't, I can't do it today. I'm just going to stay right here in my bed. And it wasn't anything physical going on. I just emotionally was really drained. And I, and I said to myself, wait a minute, I've heard these essential oils can help with mood management. I'm not sure how that works, but I'm going to give it a try. And so I used fennel essential oil and myrrh essential oil that day. And um, based on what I had read about it, and I immediately was able to shift my mood. And so then, of course, just like with the cough, I wanted to know how did this work? How did this get me from feeling sad and overwhelmed and frustrated to, wow, I have energy. I can do this. Nothing's too big for me. I can handle life. And, you know, in a matter of a couple of minutes. And what I learned was that essential oils shift emotional tones in the body, and they're very powerful at shifting those emotional tones because of the frequency that they carry. They're very high frequency. So when we look at things like food, they're lower frequency, herbs are higher frequency, while essential oils are off the charts higher frequency than herbs and food. And so you can go in and help shift emotional tones in the body. There's low tones, there's mid tones, and there's high tones. And so just as angry carries an emotional tone, there's essential oils that can offset some of those bitter, angry feelings or resentful feelings. And how it actually works is essential oils, or excuse me, emotions actually attach to cell receptor sites. And you feel this emotion in your whole body. Mm -hmm. And so essential oils, they work the same way. They go in and they attach to cell receptor sites, or in this case, they help clean cell receptor sites from emotional tones that are negative. So that is a huge way that I use essential oils. I apply them on my heart, wherever I'm feeling the emotion. So oftentimes it's the heart, it can be the belly, it can be the feet if I'm feeling ungrounded or um, not feeling um, like I, like very rooted. That's a really great place to put root oils like vetiver or ginger. And then there's oils you can put on your solar plexus, which is really that power center right below, right above your, your ribs, okay, below your sternum. And that is another really great way to apply essential oils for emotions. So um, lots of different uses. Another one of my favorite uses is to reduce toxic load in the home. These are so versatile. It is just um, crazy what you can do with them. So all those Scentsy plugins and Glade plugins and Febreze and chlorine and detergents that people have in their home are so toxic. And I'm sure if you guys are listening to this presentation or listening to Marcy Summit that you know that environmental toxins wreak havoc on our bodies, our endocrine system, our mind, our mood, our energy, our cells, everything. And so getting all those toxins out of the home, but being able to replace them with a much more natural option that not only cleans well, cleans the air, purifies the air, cleans your clothes, does everything you need it to do, but at the same time has a positive therapeutic benefit on your mood mm -hmm. and your cells and the environment and purifying the air from environmental threats when there's, you know, germs going around. You know that you're 
actually putting something in the air that's not going to ruin and clog your sinuses. You're actually putting something in the air that's going to go in and boost your immune system. So I remember uh, my sister-in-law one time giving her lemon essential oil and she would get this heavy duty chemical to get the hard water stains off of her shower and it would take her an hour and, or excuse me, it'd take her all day and it was a $20 cleaner. Well, she read in the book I gave her, there's this, you know, how-to book on essential oils you can get. And I gave her a how-to book on essential oils and it said that she could use lemon essential oil for hard water. And so she went in and she used probably about a half a bottle of lemon. It cost her about $5 to use this, this half a bottle of lemon, but it was $15 cheaper than the cleaner and it worked better and she didn't have a huge headache by the time she got done and it took her half, you know, it took her an hour instead of the entire day. So that's just a couple examples of the way that we use essential oils in the home to detoxify our environment so that we're not constantly bombarding ourselves with endocrine disruptors and hormone mimickers and the things that can irritate our mood. Even, um, we're, even, if, even if we have all the toxins out of our home, we're still surrounded outside by pesticides and herbicides things that really wreak havoc on our immune system and on our mood and even on our nervous system function. So I have people and they think it's allergies and oftentimes it's just pesticides that are bothering them. And so having citrus oils diffusing regularly or taking citrus oils to help cleanse out some of those toxins and how the citrus oils actually work. And one of my favorite things to use on a daily basis are citrus oils is the citrus oils have a chemical constituent in them called L-lemonine. And L-limonene helps with the production of glutathione. And glutathione is a big, big master antioxidant that mm -hmm. we need for our bodies to detoxify, okay? So glutathione binds to toxins and pulls them out. So when people have a headache, I always, always give them a citrus oil because there's almost always a toxic component, environmental toxic component to somebody's headache. Now, it might be, an, it might be um, a tension headache, it might be a stress headache, it might be something else that might be um, they've got an immune system thing going on, but citrus oils can help in every single one of those situations. And so citrus oils are something I always implement with headaches. Most, most people don't know that citrus oils are so helpful for that. So with high quality essential oils that are certified pure, you can take them internally. Um, I just recommend people watch the label to make sure that it says, you know, for internal use. And um, there's a lot of science about that. If people are interested, they can, they can see the science on that. There's a lot of studies on uh, pubmed.gov about internal use and its safety and stuff like that. Okay, wow. So <laughs> essential oils, uh, it seems like there's benefits in all different areas. Uh, and you can use them topically, it sounds like diffusing into the air, and then in some cases internally, or would it depend on the type? Yeah, it depends on the type. I would have people read the label, okay? But most essential oils that are certified pure can be taken internally. Of course, there's exceptions. Um, generally, I only take essential oils or recommend that they be taken internally for things like glutathione production. So, if you're, so citrus oils are a big one. And then also, if you're wanting to boost the immune system, um, this can help create a systemic um, through the intestines, through the liver and things like that. If there's threats in those organs, which oftentimes there are, this can really help get the essential oil exactly where it needs to, especially for things like intestinal threats. So when you're wanting to clear out um, and, and create a balance of flora and get the bad out, you know, I always say out with the bad, in with the good. This is a good way to get out with the bad um, flora that's, that's bad that might be there that might be thrown off your gut chemistry. So that's a great way to use essential oils in moderation as you're doing it. And your cells actually are completely fine with using essential oils inside and out as long as they are pure. So I always, I can't stress enough, work with an essential oil that is certified pure, that there's third party labs, that there's a lot of testing. There's about, I would say about 85% of essential oils on the market today are adulterated. Um, and so, and that's just, that's what the labs tell us is that the, the oils that they're testing, about 75 to 85% of them are completely fake. So just like scientists can take that copy of the menthol, you can go in and really easily copy chemical constituents. And people might even get a therapeutic result at some point, um, but we know what it's doing to the parasympathetic nervous system. And because it's synthetic, the body doesn't recognize it and it can build up a toxicity in the body. So I always recommend, even if the essential oils from the grocery store smell nice, or maybe they give you a therapeutic lift or something, they're still not anything compared to what an actual pure essential oil straight from the plant can do for you. Okay. And how do you know what the quality is or what do you look for? 
So I look for third party testing. Okay, so I always make sure I'm working with a company that ha that's very transparent. So um, companies that I work with are gonna have their essential oil test results um, online, okay? So that's a really important thing. So transparency. Also sourcing is a huge deal. When somebody is sourcing their essential oils from indigenous regions, that's how you know you're gonna get the highest quality essential oil possible. When you're, you know, you're getting your lavender from France and Bulgaria, but keep in mind a lot of these companies can label that that's where they're getting their lavender because there's no regulation in the industry. So it is really important that you work with a trusted company that has the third party testing, that has transparency, and that goes above and beyond to make sure. So go with a company that is, um, that is known for their quality. And also check pricing, because if you see something like a frankincense, you know, for $10, that's just not real frankincense. You cannot even distill or <laughs> you can't, you cannot get frankincense for that cheap. So when you're seeing Amazon is a horrible place to buy essential oils. Um, Dr. Robert Pappas is one is a world known renowned chemist with essential oils. And he, he's somebody that I follow um, on his website. He's also on Facebook. It, he's somebody that has a lot of test results from other companies. Um, so you can see, hey, and he really recommends, you know, he's tested all these Amazon brands. And he's, he's unaffiliated with any company. He just tests independently. And so I like people to, um, I like to know that the company I'm working with is using independent labs and not somebody that's, you know, um, got that has a lot of financial interest in the sale, the sell of that essential oil. So it can be a dirty industry if you're not careful with the company that you choose. So I always say, do your research, um, use a certified pure brand, third party labs, transparency and indigenous sourcing is a really, really big one. The company that I work with, and I don't, I don't like to name brands when I'm doing these kind of informative things, but um, they are very transparent with their sourcing. And so you can actually see sourcing videos um, of where these are being sourced. So, you know, they're not just being generated in a lab. Okay, great. Uh, so what's a good place to start? If someone says, you know, oh, I want to try essential oils. Um, is there a good starter one to try or a good place uh, to start with it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's little starter kits you can get. There's also, if I was just going to start with a few oils, I would definitely say do a citrus oil, do a mint oil, and do frankincense. Um, and if you can't do frankincense, do lavender. Okay, so a citrus oil like lemon or grapefruit, I think is a must. I recommend that for almost everybody because we're so bombarded by toxins in our society and everybody could use the extra glutathione. So that's gonna help with almost every function in the entire body, including mood um, and your emotional body. So the citrus oils and go with, which, go with which ones you're drawn to. Lemon and grapefruit are big for me. I also love wild orange. Um, there's also, uh, the second thing I would always say is do a nervous system tonic or something that's going to really help with inflammation in the body because we all have inflammation at some level or another and something that's going to protect the cells. And so frankincense is excellent for that. And, um, that's one that you can take internally as well as topically excellent for getting inflammation down in the body. And then third, I would say some sort of a floral oil like lavender or Roman chamomile is really great for um, just balancing stress levels in the body and also helping with an adrenal support. So what I love about essential oils like lavender and Roman chamomile is they really can help balance histamine levels in the body. So um, it's really great for any kind of itchy eyes, runny nose, tickly throat. Lavender can really help with that. Another essential oil that I think is really great is rosemary essential oil. It is great for so many things because it has a steroidal structure and it can really help balance inflammation in the body and that um, cortis those cortisol and adrenaline levels in the body, they can really balance them. And just knowing that, that we live in this society that is so stress-oriented, those are some of the great stress oils, the floral oils and the rosemary, and then the frankincense for inflammation and the citrus oil. So that, those, I would probably start with that kind of a blend. And then in the beginning, I did talk a little bit about a mint oil because mint oils are so refreshing. You can use them in your mouthwash, you can diffuse them, you can use them to open up your airways, to get you know, head tension down, increase mental focus. They're so versatile, so I love peppermint. Okay. Wow. Okay. So those are great suggestions. And you said with the citrus and the mint, you can diffuse it into the air. Uh, and then with the frankincense, you can take it internally. The rest of them you would just put on your body. 
Yeah, yeah, you can put them all on your body. You can even diffuse all of those oils that I just talked about. All of those oils that I just talked about can be used aromatically, topically, and internally. Okay. So they're Great. very versatile. Great. And then could you talk about, um, generally speaking, uh, how much someone would um, want to invest or what the investment is uh, for some of these oils so that people can get an idea? Yeah, I think for high quality oils, they range, um, you know, the citrus oils range from about 10 to $15. And then for a higher different oil, like some of the tree oils, like frankincense or sandalwood, they can be a little higher, 50, 60, sometimes $70 um, because they're tree oils and they're, it can be a laborious process to harvest some of these. And of course, um, if you're working with a company that's fair trade, you want to make sure that if you're finding something, a tree oil that is really, really cheap, uh, like frankincense or sandalwood, then you're looking at something that may, might be synthetic. So, um, and those are some of the more um, more expensive oils, like your frankincense and your sandalwood. But you can get tree oils like white fir or Douglas fir or cedarwood for fifteen, sixteen, twenty dollars for a fifteen mil, and that's a really great price, and and, and it's much more affordable than using a lot of synthetic options. And then your mint oils, you can get anywhere from 15 to $20 as well. So you're looking at um, really, really affordable to use essential oils. Some of the floral oils are, you know, the floral oils can range, like a lavender can, can be about $20. Um, when you're looking at some essential oils like Melissa or Helichrysum, where you're just harvesting, um, well, in Helichrysum, you're just harvesting the, the, uh, the flower and not the whole plant. You're looking at something that's a little more spendy the chrysum is is fantastic for so many different things um bruising inflammation sinus swelling um threats we use it all the time for immune system support so even though that one's a little more spendy it is worth its weight in gold it has saved us a lot of time and energy and t really time being being under the weather and then so it just it really depends on the floral and the sourcing and that's why i think it's important that people pay attention to where things are being sourced melissa oil is a is very, very easily adulterated. Uh, Melissa oil and lemongrass oil are very similar in their chemistry. Uh, they've got some same uh, chemical constituents. And so a lot of essential oil companies will, they'll spike their Melissa oil with lemongrass because it's way cheaper. And so if they're selling a cheap Melissa oil, then you know you're not really getting Melissa oil. But lemongrass is like a $10 oil and Melissa's over $100. Mm -hmm. And so um, because it's just a very low yield, um, you have to distill it very quickly to get the quality and to get the amount that you need um, before it just is un before you can't distill it anymore. So it just depends. The pricing depends on the sourcing, but you're looking at you could get a kit of ten essential oils for between a hundred and and three hundred dollars, depending on the size of the bottles. And you'll find you know a thousand different uses for those ten ten bottles if you've got a great. Uh, mentor, you've got a great guide or a good book to work with, or you're listening to a summit like this, you've probably already heard 50 ways you can use these essential oils. So they're worth their weight in gold for how much they cost. And of course, very affordable. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, do you meet with people and help determine which oils would be best for what? Or um, would you recommend just looking at a guide? I do work individually with people who um, are my particular health coaching clients, and I do give them a guide on what essential oils they should be using, and I give them some specific instructions. Um, but I also think there's a lot of great things out there. I've got eBooks on my website uh, that people can download that are free that really give them some great um, usage guides. So I have an eBook, Emotional Shifting with Essential Oils. I've got the Basics of Essential Oils eBook on my website. And so anybody can download that and really learn how to use these oils themselves. And of course, I'm happy to work with people as well um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis if that's what they feel like they need. Okay, sounds great. Well, Melody, you've been completely educational on this topic. I really appreciate all the great information. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanna add in now? I don't think so. I think we covered it all. Okay, good. Uh, and then what's your website? And um, could you tell everyone about what you're offering? Yes, they can go to melodywatts.net and download my free ebook on emotional shifting and essential oils. And they'll also, um, you can sign up for my essential oil tips where you get great protocols on how to use essential oils for all your different health um, struggles and symptoms. And so those are all free for you if you go to my website. 
Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. So you can also use the link or go, go to melodywatts.com, but I'll have a special link for everyone to grab that uh, free ebook. And thank you so much for being part of the Cutting Edge Convention, Melody. You're welcome. And I'll just say it's melodywatts.net. Darn it, com was already taken. <laughs> oh, that's right, dot net. <laughs> okay, we'll head, perfect. I'll we'll head to a real estate lady if you go to dot com. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, yeah, we don't need that one. Let's go to the essential oils. Okay, thank you so much. And to everyone here today, I want to wish you a happy, healthy day. And thank you for spending some time with us. Um, and click the link, get your free ebook. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you for being part of the Cutting Edge Convention. We don't want you to miss a single valuable session. To have the entire event available to you at any time, purchase the package now before the event ends. That's when the price goes up. And watch your emails to get your next steps from Marcy.